Welcome back. I'd like to thank our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. My guest in this segment is Don Evans. Don is the chief executive, the chief executive officer That's right. of Our Place. I think we all know Our Place, uh, which, uh, as I just mentioned to Don, uh, is unfortunately a growth industry. Um, so what is the homeless situation in Victoria now? Well, I mean, it's a good question because, you know, we, we seem to be, um, you know, putting a lot of energy into serving the homeless population, but it continues to, uh, we continue to see more. Like, we're seeing about 10% um, increase in our numbers this, this summer over last summer. And, and I think we're seeing it a lot more visible in our communities because the, uh, the, the supervised consumption sites, the overdose prevention sites have brought people, I think, out of the shadows and uh, where people were more hidden away because of the addiction and now they're they're accessing services in uh, in uh, in our community and and so it's more visible um, and you know we're certainly seeing a lot of people around the 900 block and uh, because we've got the the government uh, supervised consumption next door that they're accessing and, and you say the 900 block you mean the 900, the 900 block, block of pandora, pandora where yeah. our place is and so there's uh, um, there's there's a lot of need out there i mean the the cost of living in Victoria is extremely high, and uh, you know we're seeing a lot of people that that just are really struggling, especially the the seniors. You know the the elderly um, are struggling with the the cost of healthcare and the cost of housing. Um, so we tend to be seeing a lot more people, um, you know, that are elderly. So it's uh, when you mentioned uh, you know it's more visible on the 900 block. It's actually it's right throughout almost the whole downtown. You know the you know, when you've got people who, who are homeless and living in poverty and everything else, it's not good for them and it's not good for the society, as, uh, as I'm well, sure it's, you know. It's costly. It's costly to the society, yeah, and, and and obviously the the well-being of these individuals is uh, is you know is is deteriorating. Yeah. You know, being on the street, it's very difficult to you know to have to um, deal with the stress and the anxiety. Oh, it's of, a nightmare. Of being homeless and trying to know where you're going to sleep, and the shelters are all full. I mean, we have large waiting lists for our for our shelters every night, even in the summertime. I mean, there's just a, there's there's a lack of supportive housing, there's a lack of uh, a shelter, and uh, and people don't have any choice if they're homeless that because you just can't get in anywhere. We have uh, we hear that senior levels of government have money for housing. Um, but I don't know, is housing getting built? Uh, what's happening with that money? Well, there's a struggle with that because the, there is money from the provincial government and the federal government. I mean, they've both made housing and homelessness a priority, um, but, the, but they're, they're having a hard time getting municipalities to provide property and land to be able to build it. And frankly, the communities are, uh, are, are very resistant you know, to housing, you know, to supportive housing coming in their community. And I, I think of a lot of it has to do with the, uh, the tent cities that, uh, you know, sprung up in the last few years that created a lot of challenges in neighborhoods. And, um, and then when governments reacted and housed people quickly in, in, uh, uh, into, you know, large numbers into, into buildings, it created more challenges. And so I think there's, there's a lot of hesitation. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety in neighborhoods. And, and the municipalities are listening to their constituents and, and really reluctant to do it. And, and I'll tell you, I mean, if they don't start to, you know, make land available to address this, the neighborhoods are going to get worse because when people are housed, they're, they're stable. We can stabilize them and we can bring in programming. We can deal with their, with the challenges. But if they're on the street, it's very difficult and, uh, and it's way more costly and way more, um, disruptive to have people left on the street in neighborhoods. So I, I hope that that changes and I, I really think it's going to take some a lot of education because I just think that people are just you know seeing the the chaos and some of the, the the drug addiction and mental health issues and they're just like well not in my not in my backyard. Yeah, and, and I completely understand that. Yeah. But we shouldn't have the problem in the first place. But, and, 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 and really the the solution is to house people yes. and it's to bring people inside and bring them into community. If we leave them isolated on the street they don't get better and our neighborhoods don't get better. And also we don't have to necessarily build social housing. We just need more housing because once there's enough housing, then everybody starts to move in. The people with 
more money move into the better places, but at least there's something for people with less money and they have a place to live. You, you, you know, need to have some form of shelter and, and, and obviously the, the better the shelter and the, and the better the support services, you know, the, better, the better off people are going to be. And if they have mental health issues, and they have addictions, they need help for that as well. But, but the number, you know, the first thing to do is house people. Um, you wanted to talk about uh, addiction treatment, and but we were just talking about Portugal. Do you want to just mention that Portugal has come a long way in in, in showing us all what to do about the issue of addiction? How are they? How are they on the on the issue of homelessness? Well, they're they're often tied together. There's a there's certainly a relationship. And um, Portugal, at the turn of the century, had the highest addiction rate in all of all of Western Europe. One percent of the adult population was addicted to heroin, and there was open drug use on the streets, similar to what we're seeing here. Much worse, actually, that was there, and uh, and their governments, you know, decided that they needed to to do something, and and uh, and and they and they made some real bold decisions, and they decriminalized drugs, but that was only a small piece of it, and the and the world looked at it and was very concerned with the with the actions they were taking and how they were responding, but it turns out that um, what they did uh, was was the right thing to do. And, uh, and, and now what, you know, 19 years later, but it actually probably took about 12 years before they really started to see a big difference. Uh, they now have the lowest addiction rate in all of Western Europe. And you don't see any open drugs use on the, on the, on the streets. And, and, you know, they, they developed a national strategy and a national plan. And it, and it, it included um, coordinating their whole system. And, uh, you know, whether it's health and social services and, and employment and, you know. And just housing. Yeah, and housing, and so that every you know, if someone needed help, they, you could get them the help that they needed, whatever it was, and, and wherever they went, and uh, and then they made treatment available for everybody, government funded, you know, 18 months of treatment, and they're using a model that we've actually adopted here at our place in in Victoria, and, and that's the therapeutic community. So they have 60 of these, and so so we you know have been watching you know the people on the streets struggling with addiction they're struggling with with addiction to cope with their their current situations they're struggling to to cope with childhood trauma they're struggling you know they're 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 using it to cope with uh, mental health issues i mean there's all sorts of reasons why they're medicating with these illicit drugs on the street um and and we just were seeing people you know not get better and and they'd access our services but we wouldn't really see their lives change and We'd see them going in and out of the jail, and we'd see them going in and out of the, out of the hospital and, and out of treatment centers and detox, but they're right back on the street where they left off. And, uh, and so we, um, as an organization, decided we have to try to address this. And so we've you know, been looking around the world for solutions. Portugal was one of the places we looked, and, and uh, another one is Italy. Uh, San Patriano is, has a very well-known therapeutic community to, to uh, treat addiction. And so we've, uh, you know, just recently opened one in uh, in Victoria, out at the former Youth Custody Centre. Um, Is that in View Royal? That's in View Royal. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what's the difference between that and another program that you were using before? Well, in in North America, we use a medical model of treatment, and it tends to be short term. On the island, it's mostly private. There's lots of private treatment doesn't, you know, it's not accessible for the people that we serve over at our place. And, it, you know, it costs twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 to go. Um, but, it's, but it's short term. And for, for the people that, uh, that are on the street struggling with addictions, um, there's a lot of um, challenges, underlying issues, a lot of trauma, you know, often brain injuries and mental health issues and, and, and lots of uh, things for them to, to work through. And you're not going to do that in a, in a, in a short term program. And so one of the one of the big differences is it's longer term, and then it's done in a community model so that the individuals in the program take a role in the program, and uh, and as they work through the different roles of running the community, and there might be cooking and cleaning and growing food and 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 building things and communi communications and business, <laughs> you know, business. Uh, uh, you know, so they get to live skills. a life. Well, they get to be part of the community yeah. and, and, and participate. But more than that is as they become senior peers, they become leaders and teachers and mentors to the newer people. So they're teaching each other. Yeah. So it's not a, you know, a staff that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's teaching them, they're teaching each other. So there's a credibility. Even when you're dealing with trauma, they're doing it um, instead of a psychiatrist that 
has never experienced what they've experienced. They're dealing with their peers. And so there's a credibility, there's a safety, there's a, there's a trust there and an opportunity for them to heal together. And as they're teaching the others and working through their stuff and um, passing it on, that they're, they're healing more. So it's, it's a model that, that has worked well in, in Europe. It's proven in Europe. It's proven in Australia. There's some fairly good data in, uh, in the U.S., but, but it's not used very extensively in Canada at all, and there's no data here. And so we're, we're determined to try to um, uh, you know, do that research and the data collection and, and evaluation and prove that model up here. Uh, because now, the traditional model in, in Canada, the medical model, just doesn't seem to work well at all for this population that, that we're dealing with at our place that are struggling with so many complex issues. In the European places where they've actually done this, when people come out of the program, they've got to be able to get into something where they can continue a life you know, that, that doesn't throw them back into poverty and homelessness. So, I mean, you've got to have that. You can't, you know, you've... you've People, if people are have no money and have no place to live, it, it can only end up uh, in in disaster. Yeah. So our program is 18 months to two years, and half of the program is about reintegrating people back into the community, so that they learn skills and they get schooling during the program. But then, you know, they're they all leave with a job, and they actually start going out to work before they leave, and they all have a home, so that everybody is housed. Everybody's working, everybody's connected in the community, whether it's with, they're interested in sports or arts or whatever it is, they're connected there and into recovery so that, so that they leave the, the community, the therapeutic community, and they go into a community and they're part of that community. And I think that that's what's often missing is that connection back into the community. And you know what, that connection into community is, seems to be getting taken away from our entire society. We're, yeah. we're losing community. Well, in Italy, at San Patriano, which is considered the best of therapeutic communities in Europe, they have a 72% success rate. If you compare that to the success rate for treatment in, uh, in North America, it's about 25%. And for this specific population, it's much, much lower. It's neg negligible. So, um, you know, I think that there's a real opportunity for us here. Given the situation that we have in Victoria, which is a lot of homelessness and all the problems go along with that, not only for the homeless people, but for the whole society. Can it, can, I mean, what is a road to, to fixing that up and, and eliminating that problem? I mean, it seems to start with housing. Well, I think it's, it needs to start with a plan. You know, you need to have a, you know, a plan to address it. And I think that that's, you know, something that we haven't been very good at in Victoria. And uh, the communities like in Alberta that have, uh, you know, 10-year plans in a lot of the cities in the U.S. have had a lot more success uh, because there's, you know, there's, they're accountable for it and there's, you know, they measure it and, and they report on it and, um, you know, we don't do a lot of that. So I think that, that the inventory of housing is, is certainly important, but we need to have a plan and we need to, you know, be able to uh, know what we're dealing with and, and how we're going to address it and how we're going to solve it and then work towards it. And, and even if you don't achieve everything you set out to, at least you're, you're working towards something and, and uh, um, at least you have an opportunity or a chance then to, to make a difference. Yeah. So, so I think you need a plan, you need housing, you need you know, healthcare services. And I mean, all these things to... are very doable. I mean, we can do <clears throat> this. Everything's doable. It just takes some money and... Uh... Well, and it doesn't even take probably money. And, I mean, it, right. it, because it's, it's way more costly to have right. people on the streets. I mean, the money that we're spending in law enforcement, in uh, shelters, in uh, healthcare services is huge compared to what it would cost to house people and give them the support services. It's more than double. And even the, the treatment that we're providing uh, at, uh, at the, it's actually called the New Hope or New Roads Therapeutic Recovery Community. Uh, the treatment that we're providing is half the cost of having someone incarcerated in jail, way less than having somebody you know, in and out of the hospital, um, less than people that are in shelters. So, so, so you just have to kind of, I think, shift some of the resources. Okay. Don, we're out of time, but the message seems to be that not only can we fix up this massive problem that we have, but we can save money while doing it. So we should all ask ourselves why that isn't happening. Don, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. And thanks for doing this, or thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.